everyone. You're watching Gross Tax with me, Maria Shaquille. Amidst the second wave, the medical infrastructure continues to be in the ICU along with a shortage of vaccines. Even as cases are dipping in urban areas, we are not out of the woods yet because now we are seeing a surge in black fungus cases and expert predicting of the third wave hitting the country later this year with children being the worst affected. Till date, India has reported over 8,000 cases of mucomycosis, a fungal infection with a high mortality rate and life-threatening in diabetic or severely immunocompromised individuals. In today's context, they are people being treated and who have recovered from COVID. While it mainly affects adults who are on medication like steroids as well as oxygen support, which reduces their ability to fight environmental pathogens. A 13-year-old child in Ahmedabad was diagnosed with mucomycosis after recovering from COVID. After being discharged, he complained of toothache and infection under the palate and it turned out to be black fungus. The right side of his palate and teeth had to be removed to stop the infection, in fact, from spreading. Now, cases are emerging in Telangana, Rajasthan, Delhi, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. This is putting extra pressure on the health infrastructure and confusion, certainly among patients over necessary treatments to battle both COVID and black fungus. India is already seeing a shortage of amphotericin B and many other drugs, but many go-to therapies and drugs like plasma therapy and remdesivir have been dropped by medical bodies. On top of that, as the health infrastructure battles to contain the spike, it seems unprepared to handle the looming third wave surge in cases among children who have a completely different set of medical protocols and infrastructure parameters for treatment. The mutant variant, which has fueled the second wave, has affected more children. India reported ch children as young as newborns being infected with the virus, something that was rarely heard of during the first wave in 2020. If adults are facing a shortage of beds, medicines and oxygen, imagine the crisis of the children get added to this mix. Children so far are not even eligible for vaccines. So with more and more challenges emerging, are we ready to tackle these new threats? What lessons have we learned from the second wave? Is the medical infrastructure primed to handle the crisis? Is there clarity on treatment to tackle the mutating virus and black fungus? How can we protect our children from this medical emergency? We'll be taking all these questions on the show this evening with our team of experts who are joining me now, Dr. D.S. Rana, he's the chairman of Sir Gangaram Hospital. Dr. Brian Wall is epidemiologist and John Hopkins uh, Bloomberg School of Public Health. He's based in Delhi and has been working on vaccine preventable diseases in India here for more than a decade. Professor Dilip Mavlankar is director IIPHG and we are also being joined by Dr. Isaac Bogot. He is infectious disease specialist at Toronto General uh, Hospital. I'm going to begin with you Dr. Wall when we look at these cases emerging, it is being said that this is because of excessive use of uh, steroids. But when we say that this could also impact little children, then how prepared are we? Because children, vaccines are yet to come out. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's uh, particularly worrying when we see children uh, like the child you described earlier in your segment, falling ill with uh, uh, mercurocosis. I think there's been a lot of speculation and discussion about a third wave affecting children more. I think this has come from the fact that children, uh, or when we see an unprecedented number of cases overall, we're naturally going to see a large number of cases in younger adults and children as well. And so this is especially heart-wrenching. It's especially heart-wrenching to see this happen with, uh, uh, with the secondary effects like mercumacosis. Um, but of course, uh, while we need to remain vigilant and ensure that children are protected, 
there's not really much that I have seen. There's nothing I've seen that's convinced me that younger people are going to be at greater risk um, or are actually even at, uh, currently at greater risk of disease relative to the first wave. And so um, while we need to remain vigilant, while we need to be looking uh, after uh, children and making sure that they are uh, not uh, at greater risk, uh, there's nothing that I have seen that indicates as such. Uh, in terms of treating mercosis, especially in children, there are uh, medical doctors on this panel, and I will defer to them on, on how to treat and, and, um, and look after children with this uh, terrible disease. Yes. Okay. Dr. Isaac, you know, mucomycosis as uh, after effect of the treatment of COVID-19 is being reported only in India. Why are these cases India specific? Yes, it's very important to recognize that we certainly are hearing reports of more mucormycosis in India, and we haven't heard about this from other settings. Now, the question really is, is this truly an issue with India or is there underreporting elsewhere? Also, to what extent is the reporting from India accurate and what is the data demonstrating this? I think we're probably, again, I, I don't want to speak before the data, but I think it's fair to say that this is truly a real phenomenon uh, and it'd be very important to actually quantify the degree to which this is a problem. As the prior speaker just mentioned, uh, you know, using steroids may be a risk factor for this. It may be a risk factor for this, but mucormycosis, just for the general public, just so people know, I'm not here to scare anybody, but it is a serious fungal infection. Hmm. It, it can be dangerous if it's not treated appropriately. It does need to be treated with uh, sometimes a combination of actually uh, 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 removing the fungus through a surgical intervention, plus with uh, antifungal medications. Usually it's a combined approach. Um, so it's got to be taken seriously. And okay. I'm, I'm glad people are aware of it so that they can, can, they can suspect this in, in, in patients that perhaps aren't improving with COVID-19. And if there's any clinical indications to, to look okay. for this. You can look for this and you can treat it. Hmm. Dr. Rana, rare case of mucomycosis of small intestine is being seen at Sir Gangaram Hospital, your hospital, sir. What's so rare in this case? No, this is, you say very rarely the involvement of certain organs. As you must be knowing that most of the time it is um, an area around nose and eyes and ultimately brain which are involved. But you do see rarely isolated organs like intestine and even kidneys for that matter. They have only kidney and those are rare cases which are seen of mucormycosis in normal practice also. But uh, here they have one case I mean, they haven't seen in a small intestine. The mucormycosis can invade any part of the body, you know, that, for that matter, you know. Hmm. But most and of the time the involvement is of uh, nose and round and uh, I, uh, around the eyes and then ultimately brain. You know. And is this particular, uh, you know, patient that you have in the hospital right now, a case of co post COVID complication? And is he, uh, co is he COVID positive right now? Yeah, he was a co -patient, recovered patient of COVID. And uh, in that patient we have found that once we operated upon, we didn't know that he's COVID. But after operation, we came to know that the, uh, after biopsy and histopathology report, that uh, this patient is also suffering from mucormycosis. Hmm. Professor Dilip Lankar, again, the question is about excessive use of steroids and also about the nature of oxygen that has been used. And that is perhaps it is being seen as this rise in the cases. Over 8,000 cases, sir, and now it is being seen and categorized as an epidemic in several states. Uh, how much of a big challenge it will be now uh, and because it is not infectious, how careful should one be? Uh, I think uh, it is a big emerging challenge as the cases of COVID are going down. But in some cities, there are hundreds to thousand cases of this. And the more dangerous part is the mortality is 40 to 50 yeah. percent. So, which is very, very bad as compared to COVID, which has a mortality of 1 to 2%. Hmm. So, this is a very serious complication and we have to really work very hard to control it. And all the governments in the states are 
fighting this with their best possible experts. The only rate limiting factor is the availability of medicines. Uh, there is acute short supply of the medicine. Second is medicine is also very expensive. So if the patients have to pay, it will cost 10 lakhs, almost a yes. million rupees uh, just for the injections and the surgery, etc. apart. Because this fungus goes in various parts of the body, starting with the nose, it goes to the eye, to the, the sinuses and to the brain also and can cause a lot of damage and even death. Professor, so I think we have to... Yes, Professor Mavlanga, you know the first few cases came from Maharashtra and Gujarat. Is there anything geographical specific uh, to this disease that we started seeing surge in the cases from these parts? Uh, I don't think there is anything geographic because now it is being reported from many places. But yes. it is true that most of the cases, large majority are from Gujarat and Maharashtra. Hmm. Second is for any such new disease, we have to really study its epidemiology, which age group, which locations, what are the kinds of correlations we find. We have already started a small case control study. The people who are in the same wards in ICUs who developed versus those who didn't develop. Hmm. And the preventive measures of immediate follow-up and rigorous follow-up of those cases who received more steroids, had high blood sugars, who are at the high risk of this. And also we have to do some environmental sampling, saying where is this fungus coming from in the environment and can some something be done? Is it our hospital infection control which is lacking? So all these factors need immediate investigation and serious research to find out its causes and how to control it. Okay, Dr. D.S. Rana, the specific point about hospital hygiene or some, you know, excessive use of steroids. Where did the entire COVID protocol clinical management or treatment go wrong then? You know, it is uh, right now, do you just anybody guess? All we know about micromycosis as such in general, that this is a very uncommon disease and is commonly seen in uncontrolled diabetes mellitus patients. So here also, like let us say we have about 65 cases or so right now in the, in the hospital. That means I'll use that only three cases are mild cases are from our hospital. So 62 patients have been referred from either other small hospitals in Delhi and outside Delhi. So we are all studying various factors. In due course of time, we may be able to provide some answer for this thing. Right now, if anybody guess, all what we know that uh, almost 70% of the people, they were having diabetes mellitus. And probably when they, once their sleep spread, their my, my diabetes must have worsened. Some of them, though, you were not diabetes, but they were pre-diabetes. So, Dr. Rana, they're if you were to do a sampling of patients who are present in your hospital, are they all urban patients first? And do they have comorbidities? And that is the reason why, uh, you know, are they diabetic or immunocompromised? That is the reason why this, uh, you know, mycomycosis cases are being reported. What exactly I, is the reason behind it? I can give you just, they are a mix of urban and rural population, number one. Okay. Number two, uh, out of, uh, you know, uh, 61 patients right now, 35, 36 patients, they are already diabetes. They were known case of diabetes writers, and they all received steroid. 13 patients more became diabetes during hospitalization when they were treated for that, you know. And uh, the rest of the patients are still non-diabetic. What good 13 patients, they are not having diabetes now at all. When they are okay. suffering from the disease. Okay. So there are so many things remain unanswered. If Okay. That why it is happening, and then it happened during first phase also. But during this phase, I've been seeing more. In the first phase was seen to be late during this phase. You know, some of the about almost half of the patients are positive, half of the patients are negative. Hmm. Some of the patients are still actively positive, you know. So there is some something more whether this virus is causing some problem, whether it's merely because of we have some number of cases that are more, so we are seeing more to this time. Okay, all these questions will be answered once there is a some study of this, you know, and the study is going in our hospital also, other hospitals also. Probably once we have some national study on this thing, then we will be able to answer the question very specifically. Yes. Right now, you can only say that this is care, this prevalence is unacceptable. 
as just now somebody mentioned that this death rate is very high. Mortality rate, mortality rate, some people lose okay. your eyes. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay, let me get um, a, a quick word also from Dr. Brian. Uh, Dr. Brian, uh, the children are supposed to have a higher um, immunity or better immunity. How susceptible are they to mucomycosis and also COVID? In terms of uh, susceptibility to murky mycosis, I think we uh, need a lot more data. There are currently studies ongoing, as, as uh, Dr. Mavalankar had indicated. We need to, I think it's important to uh, look at what we're seeing within hospitals, um, but really well-designed studies that compare and identify uh, risk factors, environmental risk factors, age-related risk factors, uh, other uh, individual risk factors are really, really important, will help us to untangle whether or not uh, this is something that's really affecting children, or if it's a factor of more children becoming uh, infected with COVID as a result of very high numbers of overall infections, and as a result of that, seeing this more and more in children. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think, I think we need more studies. In terms of, of COVID being uh, more and more um, uh, affecting children in, in, in more severe ways, here is also where I had mentioned earlier, we haven't really seen a lot of data to indicate that children are at increased risk of, of COVID, either in the current wave and certainly uh, uh, speculating toward a third wave, nothing to indicate uh, that children would be at greater risk there either. Of course, we need to be uh, continuously uh, monitoring this and making sure that yes. this doesn't evolve and change into a situation where children are at greater risk. But currently, everything that I've seen indicates that, that children remain uh, at risk, but at lower risk. Okay, so there is no specific data to suggest that uh, with the advent of a possible third wave, the children could be at a bigger risk. Dr. Isaac, take that argument a little forward with us, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the experience happening world over. Yeah, so for starters, it's okay to say that we don't have all the answers because it's true. We don't have all the answers. I think we know a lot about mucormycosis well before COVID-19. We know what some of the traditional risk factors were for this fungal infection prior to COVID-19. Those namely were people with compromised immune systems. So sometimes in organ transplant recipients, sometimes in those who have cancer or were on various types of chemotherapy, sometimes in those with diabetes. It doesn't, doesn't mean it was common in those people, but it wasn't an unexpected finding and it was more of a rare but real uh, uh, infection that those individuals could get. Now, of course, we're starting to see a signal amongst the noise for people who are infected with COVID-19 in India. It's not entirely clear what the burden is. Obviously, uh, as many of those before me have said, you certainly need good data to drive this to understand what the true relationship is. Is it steroids or something else? It, what the true risk factors are and what the true incidence is. Having said all that, it appears that this is, there is, you know, mucor mycosis here. It appears that healthcare providers should be aware that this is a potential complication. They should recognize that it could be potentially severe and they should, you know, quite frankly, we need uh, not just in India, but of course, globally, good education among frontline healthcare providers to uh, uh, make them aware that this is a potential complication. Here's how you diagnose it. Here's how you treat it. Here's how you confirm it, uh, just so that we can have a much better understanding, so we can actually care for our patients better, yes. but also so we can have a much better understanding globally of what the true burden of this fungal infection is. Hmm. So then, Professor Mablankar, since there are several unanswered questions, uh, the medical fraternity is trying to find a treatment or a cure for COVID-19. We are seeing that plasma therapy has been dropped because the ICMR sets so. Now, remdesivir as a treatment protocol has been dropped because the WHO is saying, now, how do you treat mucomycosis? Uh, we are seeing this black market uh, marketeering, which is rampant of amphotericin. So uh, the treatment of COVID hasn't changed much. Some of the things which were thought to be effective have been taken off uh, because there is no very strong evidence. Uh, but mucormycosis treatment is in some sense clear. Only difficulty is that the drug which was uh, manufactured by few companies in small uh, uh, lots is now required on a very massive scale because there are eight, nine thousand cases and more yes. will come up. 
So we have to really ramp up the availability of the drug and have to have a mechanism by which it is highly subsidized because nobody can afford 10 lakh, 15 lakh rupees yes. of drug to save. Plus, on top of that, the cost of surgery, hmm. which is, of course, a very uh, def defiguring uh, because eyes are to be removed, sometimes yes. face uh, gets distorted, etc. But in spite of that, people can survive and if diagnosed early with minimum interventions and medicines. So I think the main focus should be how to identify them early on, put on treatment with a team of doctors, including ophthalmologists, ENT specialists, and a general physician who will control diabetes and other okay. things. Uh, that will be the route to go and government has a big role to play in bringing down the prices and subsidizing the treatment yes, and making it right. available. That will be the big challenge in the next few weeks and that is the reason why five pharma companies have been roped in to ensure that uh, amphotericin which is a crucial and a critical drug in the treatment of uh, mucomycosis is now available. Dr. Rana, Dr. Brian, Professor Dilip Mavlanka and Dr. Isaac, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and with black fungus cases are on the rise in the Delhi NCR region as well, medicines like amphotericin B are in short supply leading to a boom in the black market. Arundhata with this report, I'm leaving you with this. Thanks so much for watching. Rahul was in a dilemma. The private hospital where his mother is currently battling mucomycosis asked him to arrange amphotericin B injections to save her. I got this number through social media. I sent her the photos of the injections that we needed. She said she has it. Okay. And she uh, she told us the price per while and everything was seemed genuine. And after that, uh, once things were being finalized, she said that you need to pay full, full advance, full payment in advance. I asked my father to pay around 53,000. She said 6,700 per while. So we needed, uh, we, we asked for 8 vials, so 53,600 and we made the full payment at around 11 o'clock in the morning but after after that she said she started turning, you know, the stock has finished, this, that and the last time she gave us that stock will come by 7 p.m. So I was waiting till 7 p.m. something will happen but apparently in the end she was a fraud and my father lodged a complaint in the police. Rahul even confronted this alleged supplier on the phone. Ma'am, you said 7 p.m. and now it's 6 p.m. and when will we get injections? Yes, yes. I, we already sent the delivery boy. Okay, I will check him, okay? One where minute. have you, ma'am, that's what I'm asking now. Where have you sent him? Sorry? Where where have you sent him? You haven't even asked for the address now. Yeah, we are sending to your address now. Which address? Yeah, you given your address, right? No, I haven't given the address now. Then you send your address, please. So, ma'am, then you are saying that delivery boy is on his way. If, <laughs> if he doesn't have the address, then where is he going? No, we send many deliveries. That's why. You send okay. your address okay. then. It's a similar story for Gurugram resident Surya Dikshit. She tried to procure amphotericin B for her husband when he started getting symptoms of mucomycosis. I called up my friend Leher Sethi who is there in Delhi to arrange for this medicine wherein we got in touch with Balaji Medical Store through India Mart. This lady from the store confirmed of having this ready stock of amphotericin B. We immediately placed the order for 12 vials. They said they, we need to make full payment in advance to which we didn't agree. We agreed on 50% advance payment. By the time we made the payment, they said it is already too late. They will send the parcel next morning by 10 o'clock. We didn't receive the parcel. We again made up a call. They said they have they ran out of the stock and they will be delivering it by 5 in the evening. That was the time when we realized that we were being cheated of our money. Arundhati Mitra was also desperately trying to arrange the amphotericin B for a relative admitted in a private hospital in Delhi. She too fell into the same trap. Uh, we got a lead uh, from a friend of mine and uh, she has contacted uh, a Delhi person and uh, he got the number of uh, this Balaji Medical. The name is Balaji Medical. 
and uh, they are sure that uh, they have uh, like plenty number of uh, stocks with them and they can uh, deliver immediately so we transferred like uh, 50000 without uh, giving a second thought after that uh, we got uh, information like this uh, they are getting uh, out of stock and uh, they will be delivering it as soon as they are getting the stock back so uh, they are sure of by evening we will be getting it again uh, they played on again they said that tomorrow morning she didn't pick the call as these vultures take advantage of desperate families of patients, the center has stepped in and promised to take action. They have also increased production of amphotericin B. Bharat Sarkar ne sabhi state government ko advisory jari kiya hai, aur humne bhi DGCI ke madhyam se desh mein aise koi black mein bechne wale log pakde jaye, to uske samne kadi se kadi karyavahi karne ke liye humne adesh jari kiya hai. The cases of black fungus or mucor mycosis are at rise. The medicine like liposomal and amphotericin B are not available, which is giving the opportunity to these black marketeers and frauds to loot people. In our story, we have seen that how these people were asked to pay colossal payment beforehand and in the end did not get anything. And therefore, system needs to show some alacrity by providing these medicine and secondly take action against these vultures who are making money in the misery of these people. With camera person Rajan Saxena, this is Arun Dhanta for CNN News 18.